time I've been looking for something to replace my old 18 volt metal cutting circular saw here and today that day has come. This is the new Makita XGT 40 volt Max CS002G cold cut metal cutting circular saw. It is the largest cordless metal cutting circular saw that Makita have made thus far, running a 185 millimeter or seven and a quarter inch blade with a max cut depth of 67 millimeters, I do believe, but we'll test that. Design wise, you can see it's come a long way since the old DCS 550 here. The first one I think that they did was the BCS, which is the same tool, just with a different battery mount because they um, had battery issues. But yeah, this was, I do believe, the first cordless Makita metal cutting circular saw. Some people in some parts of the world will call this a cold cut saw. On the box that this came in, it's called a just a metal saw. Why cold cut? Well, when you cut with one of these, you don't end up with a stinking hot edge like you do with an angle grinder. You can cut a piece of metal with this and then stick your hand straight on it. It cuts it cold. Not only does it cut it cold, but it usually cuts it burr free as well. If you've got a good blade on one of these, there's no sparks, no burr, no heat. When I first saw the design from this tool come out of Japan, I thought that is one good looking circular saw. They have put a bit of effort into making this a good looking as well as functional tool. Unlike previous 18 volt versions, the handles sort of moved a bit back here. It's almost like a rear handle saw rather than a top handle saw. Like this sort of design, you've got your hand on the top. We have this very large handle on the front and sort of wraps around to the side as well. Gives you plenty of places to hang on to this thing, depending on what you are doing with it. The trigger lock is of the push-in variety. It's very low profile though, and seems to push in very easily. Hasn't got that slope on it like some of the wood cutting circular saws in the 40 volt range have. They've just gone back to the standard flat ones, but feels pretty nice. What does it sound like now that I've got my hand on the trigger? Wow, that's quiet. Now you might think that sounds a bit slow. We'll talk about that shortly. It has a nice shiny stainless steel base, which of course you can lower. There is no marks on here though, like you'd normally get on a wood circular saw to show what level you're at, how many millimeters or inches you have dropped down or come up from your piece of wood. So you don't know your depth of cut with that. I personally don't care that much because I never usually trust these anyway because every blade's slightly different so I usually measure it with a ruler anyway. With Makita metal cutting saws you won't get a bevel on it, it's a fixed base so all you can do is adjust the depth, you can't put any angle on it. it has an LED light here on the front which shines down through this diamond cut into the base here. So you can see the line through the base, which is quite a good little feature. And you just line up your line with the groove in the front and the two points on the diamond. If you're familiar with Makita 40 volt circular saws, you'll notice that the battery is on a different orientation here. We're going sort of vertically this time instead of sticking out the side or being flat on the bottom. I like this way because it means there's nothing sticking out the side with some of the other tools. The batteries just get wider and wider and it sticks further and further out the side. Can make it a bit tricky to do cuts up against straight edges and stuff because the battery ends up clashing. Whereas this way the battery will extend up this way which may be a problem with the 8 amp hour battery because it'll be quite high leaning over with the handle. I don't know, we'll have to wait until we use it to see if that's a problem. Now we start getting to the fun features. Better turn the light back on. So we've got this sticking out the front here. What is that? Those of you familiar with the HS009G or the HS011G will know that this lever is a guard release. Uh, so when you've got your hand on the top here, your thumbs there, poof, you can open up the guard, nice and easy so you're not going to have a catch when you start your cut. Very good feature and I hope it's something that Makita put on all their circular saws from now on because Makita guards have for a long time been a problem when it comes to catching on the edge of your material when you start your cut. We have built-in storage here for holding an allen key for changing your blade, but how do we get to said blade? Because there seems to be this weird looking thing on the front. Most of the blade you can see is covered by this. What is this? Well this catches all your chips. When you're cutting with your saw, it takes out the little chip, it carries around up in here, which I'll show you in a second, and ends up deposited inside this. You then take this off and empty it out when it's full. Pretty cool. 
that should stop most, won't stop all of course, but it'll stop most of your filings going on the ground and being a pain in the butt like metal filings are. I've seen a lot of people panic that they thought this was made of plastic. Well, the outside here is polycarbonate plastic. This is all polycarbonate as well, so it's polycarbonate tool rather than a PA6 with glass fiber. They've gone straight to polycarb, which is the best option in my opinion, the most impact resistant. Etc. But the inside of this, never fear, is not made of plastic. To get to the inside, put your hand here, put your finger on the trigger, poof, off it comes. And the inside is made of magnesium. If we take a look here, like I said, your chip will come round, follows this path which curves into the top of this, so that your filings go inside here and they build up in here. How will you know when you've got to empty that? Well, They've put a little window on the side here, so you've got this in between these slats here, there is a clear panel, so if you can see your chips in there, time to take this off and give it an empty. This part of the tool here is all magnesium as well, and we now have access to change our blade also. Blade it comes with in this part of the world, E12871, which is for mild steel and stainless steel between, I'm pretty sure, <laughs> it's underneath the the flange here now but I'm pretty sure it's between 1.2 and 6 millimeters. 45 tooth blade, it's quite nice. I haven't looked at all the different blades available in the FE cut range for cutting metal yet but well, I'll have a look at that before the end of the video and see what other things are available. This blade is rated for 5000 RPM. Hang on a minute, you might be saying 5000 RPM? What happens if I put it on my circular saw because that's like 6000 it'll explode. How slow is this saw? Well, metal cutting circular saws run at a slower speed than a standard wood cutting saw. That is why you can't just chuck a metal cutting circular saw blade on a lot of circular saws. Some you can, but some are way too fast for these blades. Some of the Makita 40 volt saws run at 6,500 RPM, which is just a bit too quick for cutting metal. Metal you want to be a little bit slower, a little bit more careful. You don't want a blade to catch when you're cutting metal. It's a totally different story to when it catches cutting timber. So this saw only runs at 3,500 RPM, which incidentally is 100 RPM slower than this old 18 volt Makita, this old brushed version. This is of course brushless, I shouldn't need to say that by now. Don't imagine Makita are going to be making too many 40 volt brushed tools. Certainly not a saw or an angle grinder or an impact driver or a drill, they'll, they'll definitely all be brushless. That's the way it is now. Blade has a 1.4 millimeter kerf, and while we're at it, a little bit of a quiz, see how clever you guys are? There's three flat spots on this guard. Flat, flat, flat. Why are they there? They're only on one side of the guard. Who knows the reason for that? Let me know down in the comments. So it's a nice looking unit, it's a nice feeling unit, it's good and solid. Let's actually just see how much it weighs, and then I'll tell you one last thing about it before we go and do a cut. Bear tool with the blade, we are looking at 3.8 kgs. With a 2.5 amp hour battery, 4.5 kgs. With a 4 amp hour battery, it comes in at bang on 4.8 kgs. With a 5 amp hour battery, it's 5.1 kgs. And with the beast, the 8 amp hour, we are coming in at 5.6 kgs. Good solid heavy tool and I think maybe the reason for that is some of you are going to like this. Made in Japan. Another 40 volt tool that's made in Japan. Seems as there's a few of them coming through. This piece of stainless tube as you can see rough as guts on the edge. It's been cut with an abrasive wheel on a chop saw both ends and it is mighty rough. It's changed color from the heat and left these ridiculous burrs. So we're gonna remove that. So easy. Sorry about all the noise, duckies. Next up, we have this piece of angle iron here. She's five mil thick, so this will be a good test for it. Next up, this 2.5 millimeter thick piece of Corten steel. Cutting sheet goods is when these sort of tools really shine when compared to an angle grinder. Let's now check which cuts a bit of rebar faster, an angle grinder or the new metal cutting saw. But first, hey Dan, 
don't forget to get that coffee and ice cream for Chelsea. She's waiting, mate. <laughs> And even though I don't have a brand new blade, although this is a pretty good Nick stainless steel blade on this saw, I'll put these two up against each other, just doing, well, I'll probably just do one cup because these blades are quite expensive. So when I did that cut then I thought, yeah, this saw's a good little saw, it cuts through metal good and fast. I don't know how much better the 40 volt's actually going to be. And then of course I used the 40 volt and wow, it is a nice tool to use. It's a little bit more cumbersome in a way, you know, it's, it's a lot bigger, it's a lot heavier. This is a very light, compact little tool. They're basically the same length, except this one is like 50% handle, whereas this one's almost like all tall. So if you just do the odd little cut every now and again, one of the small 18 volt ones would be fine. There is of course much better improvements on this particular saw, that ones that hold onto the chips and stuff. This one's very basic, there's no chip holder or anything. And it's awfully hard to see at the front what's going on. The 18 volt ones from Makita come in this size blade which is 136 millimeters, And they also do them in 150. And then of course now we're on the 40 volt with 185. If this is your first time here, I do tons of 40 volt Makita reviews. It's sort of become my thing now. And um, we've still got this one coming up. So make sure you subscribe and hit the notification bell and all that stuff and give it a like and shit while you're there. Eh? So yeah, what else do you need to know about this tool? Now I wanted to cut some 10 mil plate and I've got some 10 mil plate, but I need it for a job coming up and I'm not sure where I need to cut it. So I don't want to stuff it up. So what I'm going to do is cut some 8mm plate instead. Always scary, even though it's cold. It's very scary trusting to put your hands straight on something you've just cut when it's metal. But that's amazing. Slightly warm. When it comes to blades, they do make a 38 tooth blade for cutting through thick material. This one, like I said, was 1.2 to 6 millimeters, and it has 45 teeth. And there's a 60 tooth blade that's better for thin material, such as corrugated iron, thin sheet metal, uh, framing on housing, that sort of stuff. So plenty of options to get your job done and this blade seems to cut no problem through stainless or mild steel. I've also cut plastic with it. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't recommend that because then when I was cutting some steel later, all the filings, actually the shot of when I cut this thick piece here, all the filings jammed up in here because it had blocked up with plastic. So yeah, don't cut plastic with it. <laughs> That's my my tip of the day. Anyway, this is, how close can we get this? This is the piece of eight millimeter steel I cut, just to show you the cut edge. It's not bad, it's a little rough, but that's just because I wasn't using a straight edge, I was just pushing it through by hand and it was wiggling around a little bit, so we've got a few, few marks left in it, but it's pretty smooth. So this is our depth of cut test. There's the full depth there. We'll see what that is after I've made the cut, of course. Sixty-eight and a half millimeters it looks. Yeah, sixty-eight and a half mil. What was the official? Wasn't it sixty-seven? Or was it sixty-nine? So with the depth of cut, I managed to cut to 68.5 millimeters deep. That is about, what, two and three quarter inches, something in that vicinity. Now Makita rated as 67 mil. That's probably 67 mil plus a little bit for the clearance of the tips. 
I do find you can cut a few millimeters deeper usually than what they say. So they recommend more teeth for thin stuff of course like corrugated iron but I find it's fine cutting corrugated iron with a blade like this. I usually stack a few sheets higher though I'm doing a few cuts I stick them all together just go slowly make sure they're well supported no problem at all. So what about emptying out the filings we have in here? If we um, can we zoom in enough are we going to be able to see them? As you can see the window is empty. If I tilt this all backwards you can now see it is full of all the schwarf. There is filings galore in there mixed in with plastic and all sorts of shit because of something I'll show you maybe at the end of this video. So yeah there's our little window. Shake it. Gone. Look at that. It's amazing. Just below this window there is a vent on an angle inside here for air to come out and some small particles do get out through there as well I've noticed. Air is able to get in through these vents at the front of the polycarbonate here and get between the polycarbonate and the magnesium just to keep it all cool to the touch for when you're using it for extended periods of time you don't want this thing getting hot and grabbing it by accident and burning yourself so that's what that cooling is through there let's take a look on the inside here you can see open through there there's a big air cavity so once your filings are all filled up take this off take it to your bin don't do it on your bench and empty it all out. So it's much better than it going all over the ground into your shoes, up the sleeve of your shirt, etc. And I wish my 18 volt one had had that all these years. Isn't it pretty? But what are those plastic bits in there? Hmm. Make sure you watch to the end. Now I imagine by now some of you have already put in the comments. What's the difference between the CS001G and the CS002G? This is, as far as I'm aware, the only difference. It seems Makita have been listening to me down in this part of the world, haven't they? And so, the CS002G has the guard release, whereas the one doesn't. As far as I can tell, that's the only difference. If you have the option of getting the O2 over the O1, get the O2, because then, You've got Pac-Man styles. Mine came with a straight guide in the box, which is nice. Another thing, Makita are listening. I don't think I got one with the 18 volt one. I think these should be included with every circular saw. So in conclusion, I'll probably be getting rid of my 18 volt one and sticking with this 40 volt one. It was no problem using it with the 8 amp hour battery, apart from it's a bit heavy. If you're doing it on flat sheet of goods, not a problem. If you're trying to cut thin stuff, it can be a little bit it's a little bit cumbersome, it makes the tool a bit sort of lopsided almost. So cuts perfectly well with a two, two and a half, four amp hour battery. You don't need the big ones. But there's no issue with holding the tool or anything, the batteries don't get in the way at all. It's a great tool and I'm glad that they included this. I'm glad that they sort of reworked the whole design of the tool. It's a very well designed tool. It sits on its edge like that so it makes it easier for changing your blade. Something else I noticed Makita are doing with their tools now on the 40 volt system. There's just a lot of little things that are adding up to make this 40 volt system much better than the 18 volt. Some people are still in denial about it, but hey, they'll get there eventually. And it's IP56, which is handy because the first day I got it, I took it out to photograph it for Instagram, bloody Instagram, and it bucketed down with rain. So it got nice and wet. So thanks for watching, and if you made it this far, I guess there's only one thing left. And if you've been with my channel from the start, well, you'll know why I need to do this. This, the Panasonic 5-disc carousel CD and DVD changer, I love this thing, but I've lost the knob off the front for the volume control, so it's useless. So good. Hmm, I can smell burning capacitors. You're not going to believe what I just found. Mother f Shooting on location.